All right, I hope the wait was not too unbearable because we are right back with Hepanwana doing the King's Dungeon World 1 and 2 100%. So take it away. Hey everyone, it is still me, Grandpa Speedrun, uh, Hepanwana. Um, I'm going to be showing another game that looks super retro, but is actually like from, I forget if it's last year or the year before. So it's in our old school looking game that's actually very new. Uh, the King's Dungeon is a Microvania. So earlier we had Super Metroid, the one of the quintessential um, Metroidvanias, or you might say um, Metroids. So this one, it's a Microvania. It is designed around small, tiny adventures. You have power-ups, all of that stuff. And this is played on the play date. So it's black and white because it is the play date. It's a little tiny yellow handheld thing with a crank on it. So my buttons are going to be A button, B button, and a crank. So it's kind of a weird thing. It's, it's a fun thing. It's a fun toy if you ever get your hands on it. Um, and so we're going to play through World 1 and World 2, 100% showcase. Uh, World 1 and World 2 are both their own categories, but it's great showing this whole game because the two worlds complement each other quite well. And 100% means there are secrets to be found, and we are getting those secrets. So I'll explain more about this game as we get going, but we will, we will get this show on the road, and we will get started in three, a two, a one, go. So this game is a great speedrun game because it even has a timer for speedrunning. You are this little dude, no name, but you are somebody who ate the king's royal cheese. There's a piece of that cheese, and those cheeses are what we will collect as secrets for 100%. But we ate the king's royal cheese. We could talk to people if we want. We're not going to do that. That slows us down. And after we ate the king's royal cheese, he dared to walk us up for our crimes. I mean, is it really a crime if the cheese was laying out there? I say not. So in this game, we're going to get some power-ups. We also have, if you know what coyote jumping is, um, we're going to do some amazing coyote jumping. That was a very hidden thing. We now can climb these chain walls. So coyote jumping, it is, in typical games, you get a couple pixels after you run off a ledge or a couple frames. It could be pixels, frames, or both, where you could do a low jump. In this game, as long as you have touched the ground and haven't hit jump, you could go ahead and hit jump again. So watch here. This is a coyote jump. Oh, okay. Don't watch that one too close. That was, that was a bad coyote jump. Let's show you a good one. So we go like that and we didn't have to jump up and hit that ball like we did the first time. That first time was just to show what you don't do. I'm going to stick by that as my reasoning because that sounds so much better. Intentional death there to reset my position in the room. Just like the last game I played, there is no RNG or all of the rooms are on a cycle. Um, it's a local cycle in this case, not a global. And now we use the crank on our system to crank open these doors. So you can't see it because I don't have a camera on and all of that, but I am cranking this little crank on this little tiny handheld that looks a lot like an old school Game Boy. It looks ridiculous, it feels ridiculous, and it feels great. So we are going to ignore that cheese for now and get the quintessential Metroidvania power-up, the double jump. The double jump. Every Metroidvania has a double jump, and it's always that power-up that you are looking forward to the most. Intentional death there. We grab the cheese and need out of that room in a hurry. And we got a little more cheese here with some spikes. Our hitbox is kind of bigger than it looks, which means we got to be very careful of those spikes. They could really mess us up. Jump entering this room so we can get on top of that. Coyote jump so we don't need to grab that wall. That first death is intended. Any others would be unintended. Luckily, we did not have any others. So quick death there to get back to start. This game is all about taking advantage of when to die and when to thrive. And we're just going to make sure we take advantage of any 
time where a death can help us get to the beginning of a room. And now the speedrunners power up. The dash. Check that out. Who does not like that when you're speedrunning games? It is fantastic. And it'll get you over those big spikes, because those were kind of frightening spikes. And we'll do a little coyote jump with a dash. That is just a combination of all the moves. Also, something I should point out, you cannot without double jump. Ooh, that was not intended. Unfortunately, I hit, I flubbed a button with my finger, meant to hit something else. But we'll grab this treasure from up here because of a small minor glitch in uh, detecting where the treasure is. And that let us do our new move quicker. We have our final move. It's called Smash. I call it Super Saiyan because you kind of look like Goku going, ah, and then you just blast it apart and things explode. So we are approaching the home stretch, the final challenges of World 1. But don't worry, there is World 2. Also, even though I have a smash ability, you cannot get rid of these spike balls with it. You'll notice it survived. It did not care. So don't think you could find any ways around them. This room, super tricky when you're first learning play. But if you know what you're doing, especially with those coyote jumps, all is good. And here's the king. World 100% is done as soon as the king stops yammering. And you cannot skip his dialogue. If you hit B button, it will restart from the beginning. And that is no good for anyone. So just keep hitting that button. And yes, that was the end of the game. No, it's not. It's the end of the first run. We have a second world that is bigger and we start at the king, we start with left and right options. Unlike Metroid, we are not going left, we are going right. And we are gonna go ahead and have a lot of fun adventures in this world. You could jump over that. You cannot go under that second one in the first cycle. Your hitbox is bigger than it looks. You also cannot jump over this thing if it's going towards you. Keep that in mind for later. And so, World 2 is an interesting one because World 2 has one of the hardest uh, tricks I've seen in any game. Super precise. It is pixel perfect. It is essentially pixel and frame perfect. It is the hardest trick I know of and it is part of the casual part of the run. We're going to have something we need to do at the end of this run that it is really hard to do and it will probably break most people who play this game. It will just ruin your day. And we're going to hope it goes good, but it might go real bad. We shouldn't go overestimate by a long shot, but it might drive us to adding an extra minute or two in what would be frustration. But with how chill this music is, how chill this game is, you can't get frustrated. It's way too good. Also going this direction, it is one cycle. So we're going coyote jump to this ladder because we got the Super Saiyan ability. So let's bust this open. And then notice those chain links up there. We will climb that later. Don't forget this cheese, really cleverly hidden up there just off the screen. We're going to take this upper route. That guy down there will tell you about coyote jumps if you listen to him. Oh no, I fell down. No, I fell down intentionally. I took that upper route until I could fall without bonking my head as I fell. Because if you bonk your head, you lose horizontal momentum. And losing horizontal momentum is losing frames. And that is not what we're about. Only way to get across that jump is a coyote jump. And that guy back there will teach you about it if you talk to him. But talking people, that is, that is so not speedrun tech. That is slow tech. The only person we talk to is the king and only because he forces us to listen. Once again, the second power up is the crank key, but otherwise you notice that the power ups are entirely different this time around, which is fantastic. It really adds a, a fun new flair to this. World 1 and World 2, despite being the same game, are so uniquely different. I'm already cranking right now because I knew there's a crank key door coming up. 
do not try and rush the cycle on this. You cannot beat this. If you try to, it will beat you. So we're just going to take it nice and smooth. Oh, going a little slower there than I wanted to. All right. Now let's get up here. Hopefully we could squeeze through and we're on the ideal cycle. And now, because World 2 is so much cooler than World 1, we get the dash ability earlier. Instead of power, instead of being at the end of it or next to end, it is power three this time. So let's go ahead and get all of that going with those speed dashes, which really help us right here. See you later, King. And using that, once again, we climb this ladder and we have another way we could go. And by dashing into the room, we were able to get ahead of the cycle, otherwise we wouldn't get it. This is very difficult because hitboxes and those spikes are not good friends. This is a challenging room where you need to be mindful of your momentum, because if you are not mindful of it, that can happen. So we will just make sure we do good on our momentum. This is not an easy area, obviously. We're here for the cheese, but don't forget to blow up that block because we need that out of the way. Luckily, we could do some dashing to get across all of that a little bit quicker. And this room, we will see it again. Unfortunately, this room, which is very difficult with hitboxes, is one we will be very well acquainted with. And once again, zip past the king king's like hey dude i i thought i arrested you why are you running around so much this room is one that one of my friends dubbed the meat boy room because essentially if you start dying you will die repeatedly in that room like once you die once there is no getting around it now we have the ability to climb walls which means the final power up for this run is going to be the double jump. The quintessential uh, Metroidvania power is coming at the end of the game. And so once again, we go through this room. Thankfully, we do not have to do this room again, so we don't need to worry about those tricky hitboxes, but we are coming up to the hardest part of this run, hardest part of this game. It is one of the hardest things from any game I know of, but first we will pick up two hidden cheeses. Ooh. Your jumping when you come off of these chains can be a little weird if you don't have all the right momentum going. Speaking of momentum, let's dash through this wall for a little hidden cheese. Keep the good cheese coming. Grab one more cheese, and then it's the hardest thing in this game. So let's see if we could do this. We just did that first try. What just happened? So that jump is pixel perfect. It is near impossible. I have had it where I have wasted minutes on that room on that one jump. So this, this is, this is awesome. I have never done that in the first try. I've done it in the second try. I've done it typically in the like fifth or 20th or 100th try. So this is the final approach. But before we end this, we need more cheese. Always be getting more cheese. And time is coming up in just Three, two, one-ish time. And oh boy, that is, that is without a doubt the quickest I have ever done these two categories back to back. Also, this game gives you a in-game timer that is perfect in-game timer. So if, if you know anyone with a play date or if you have a play date and you want to speed run this game, it is so easy to submit runs. You don't need to retime them. You get the timer right there. And yes, that was the end of the game. It's also the end of my runs. I am so glad to have been able to come back to Game Over Cancer. I love 
this event. I love the cause because F cancer. Cancer, I know too many people who have passed. I know too many people who have battled cancer. And cancer is absolutely horrible. So being able to help raise money to battle such a horrible disease always raises, you know, it lifts my heart up. And I really hope that if you can, consider donating. If you have the capacity, the ability, donate. If you don't, you know, share the word of this event. It's going on for many days to come. And thank you for letting me be a part of it and letting me, uh, I guess, bring an end to Tuesday night. So thank you everyone and much love to all of you. And thank you very much, Heponwana. It was a joy to see these games. You always bring us a very distinctive style of game that we appreciate. Uh, so it was a pleasure to watch. And uh, it's true, it is the end of tonight, but uh, we will be back tomorrow with some more speedruns. And for the rest of the week, here at Game Over Cancer.